I read 10 books this month. Let's talk about them. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Hi, my name is Liz and today we're going to talk about my September wrap up. So all the books that I read in the month of September. I'm happy to say I finished nine and DNF'd one. So technically didn't finish 10 but I still, I read a good chunk of one of them and you'll see that in just a minute. But I want to start off by saying that going into the month of September, I was very much looking forward to my reading. I was really excited for the assortment of books that I was going to be reading in the month of September mainly because I was finishing up my summer TBR and I also had some books I wanted to read in between seasons and then I was also starting my fall TBR so there were a lot of books that I was just really really excited to get to in this month however <laughs> I don't know what was going on if it was just my mind mentally or with just other things happening in my life but it was a very meh reading month meh is the best word to describe it I feel like a lot of my books like I wasn't happy while reading a lot of these books and I don't know if it was just me mentally or if it was the books themselves I honestly don't don't know. I don't know if I was like partially in a book slump. I wouldn't even call it a book slump because I was still reading but I just wasn't enjoying it. I guess that is a book slump. I also listened to a few audiobooks so I'll talk about those as well. I don't have the physical copies so I'll just show a picture of them somewhere on the screen. I feel like I'm starting to learn what I like and what I don't like in audiobooks. Let's let's just go ahead and get into the video. So the first couple of books I read this month were a part of a reading vlog that I posted last month which was finishing my summer TBR. So if you watched that video then you kind of already know what these books are but the first book I read was Novel Love Story by Ashley Poston. I was really really looking forward to this book all summer long. However, I saw a lot of ratings on it where people were saying that they didn't enjoy it, it was underwhelming, or people were saying that this is definitely more of a fall read. So that is partly why I waited until it was closer to fall. It was kind of like just about to turn fall. I am happy that I waited because it definitely helped with the rating on this book. This story follows our main character who every year her and her book club go on this trip where they book an Airbnb and they all meet there and they just read for a weekend. However, this year no one can make it but her so she decides to go by herself to this airbnb and on her way she takes a wrong turn and ends up in this small town that is actually the town from her all-time favorite romance book whenever i heard about this book and the premise and everything i was so excited because this is honestly every reader's dream i ended up writing this 3.5 stars and the reason why i went into this with very low expectations just knowing what i had heard and seen other people rating this book people had rated it even lower than what i rated it so going in with low expectations i think was very beneficial for me mainly because I gave seven year slip by the same author five stars this year and so going from a five star to a 3.5 is definitely a jump however I don't want that to stop people from reading this book because I still really enjoyed my time while reading it it just wasn't as it didn't give me that five star feeling or even a four star feeling it was more so just a good story I had fun while I was reading it and it gave me exactly what I was kind of expecting so I think that definitely helped it was a very cute comfortable story I think falls the perfect perfect time to read this book. It was very cozy. Next, we have my first DNF of the month. And once again, if you watched that reading vlog, you already know what that is. And that is Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare. I actually still have my bookmark in here from where I stopped. I read 158 pages of this book. I couldn't do any more. I was so unmotivated. It's a very thick book. I think it's like over six, it's about 600 pages actually. Our story follows two different characters and you get both of their point of views one character he is what's known as a sword catcher so he basically is a body double for the prince of this kingdom so that way if you know the prince is in danger he'll be the one who makes the appearances so if someone tries to assassinate him it's not the actual prince getting assassinated and then our other main character in this world there's these people who have magic and people who don't if you have magic you're kind of outcasts and people don't trust you and this girl is one of those people one of those individuals who has magic she is a medical student and she's trying to learn how to become a healer that's kind of all I really know about this story if I'm being so for real. I did enjoy the first chapter of this book like learning how our guy main character became the sword catcher. You get that kind of backstory that history and I really really liked that chapter but then as soon as that was over with I was just so confused. I didn't understand what was happening. I feel like there was a lot of world building. There were so many characters but some of the names of these characters very like French names. It was hard to pronounce. It was there were so many different side characters that I was like who do I need to actually pay attention to? And 
also I felt like there was a lot of the politics of this kingdom. You learn a lot about the prince and the kingdom and it just was not interesting. I don't know. I don't mind politics in a book, but I prefer it to be later on in the story. Don't have it right at the front, right at the get-go because you're not gonna intrigue me. You're not gonna pull me into this world. I'm not gonna care about the politics unless I really, really care about the characters. I was really excited to read Cassandra Clare because I want to get into her books. She has so many and I know she's really well known and a lot of people love her writing. I just couldn't get into this one. Next up we have Shady Hollow by Juno Black. This is completely different from what I just talked about. This was actually a staff book club pick and so me and my co-workers were reading this book in the month of September. It's a very cute story. I really really enjoyed it. It's a cozy mystery surrounding these woodland creatures. So our main character is a fox. She is a reporter for her local newspaper. It starts off with one of the residents, a toad, is murdered in the town and so it goes from there. It's a mystery. It's very cozy. All the characters are little woodland creatures so it's very cute and honestly this was a great book for the fall time. It is a series. I've only read this obviously. Definitely recommend this. It was short and sweet and very very cute. Next up we have Leather and Lark by Bryn Weaver. This is the second book after Butcher and Blackbird which I read last year last fall and I loved that book. I almost gave it five stars. I think I gave it like 4.5 stars. This is also a standalone but you do see a lot of glimpses of our first two characters from the first book so highly recommend reading that first. This follows the brother of the main character from the first book and the best friend of the girl from the first book and I really really enjoyed it. You definitely got glimpses of these two characters in the first book so I was really excited to see their story with each other. The girl she is a kind of like a pop star and she's a part of this very very wealthy family and our guy main character he is kind of like a hired hitman. It involves a, an arranged marriage between the two. These two characters hate each other. So it's definitely enemies to lovers. It was a fun book. I really enjoyed getting back into this world and getting to see our main characters from the first book in this one. I ended up giving this book four stars. It was a good continuation of the series. Next we have my first audiobook of the month which was Haunted Ever After by Jen DeLuca. I really wanted to listen to this because it just sounded really fun. I didn't necessarily want to go buy this book but I've seen it and it looked like a really cute fall read. Our main character who moves to this brand new town. She moves into this very old house that is believed to be haunted and she doesn't believe in ghosts but everyone in town this is like a ghost town they have ghost tours constantly and any tourists that come to the town it's because of the ghosts that are in this town but our main character she is a new resident and our main guy character he is the local barista he's basically trying to help her there's like it's like a cute little romance I don't have much more to say about it than that I have not thought about this book since I read it I gave it 3.5 stars it was cute in the moment I don't think I would ever reread this it was just kind of meh I will say I loved the ghost side characters more than anything else. Next up, we have Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I have had this book on my TBR and also owned this book for well over a year now. This was on my fall TBR for last year, but I finally picked it up this year. I've heard so many people raving about this series. It is a series. This is the first book. It's a young adult mystery. So it's about our main character who comes to this academy. This really wealthy man owns this property and he turned it into a school for kind of like gifted students. It's very prestigious. It's very hard to get into. I think like only 50 students are accepted a year and our main character she shows up and she is into the whole true crime. She loves solving mysteries and riddles. There is actually a very dark past with this academy. The man who owns this academy his wife and daughter went missing and this serial killer called Truly Devious is behind it and it was never solved. It's a cold case. So our main character comes to this academy and she decides to solve it or try to solve it. I ended up giving this book three stars. I will say it was very fast paced. I enjoyed the pacing of this book and there were flashbacks to when the original cold case was happening. So I really enjoyed those. It was like kind of in between chapters. That was probably what I liked the most about this book, but I didn't love our main character. And I think that's why I just felt meh about the story. She just didn't give a lot of emotion. First of all, she just felt very bland to me. I don't think I'm going to continue on with this series. Next up, we have an arc, which I read this month and that is 
is Nothing Like the Movies by Lynn Painter. I was so, so excited to get this art. I will say this is one of the books that this month that I flew through. All the other ones I've talked about so far, it took me forever to read and finish, at least for my normal pacing. This one I read in a day and I loved it. It is a continuation of Better Than the Movies, which is the first book. And they are now in college. I think they are now juniors, or at least Liz is a junior in college and her and Wes are broken up. And you kind of figure out why they broke up as the story goes along. It starts off with kind of a flashback to when they broke up. You slowly learn throughout the book why that is, what the reasoning was. I don't want to say too much because I'm afraid of giving things away with that plot line. I just love Lynn Painter's writing. She just has a way with words and writing. I ended up giving this book four stars. It, I think that this just came out at the beginning of this month. I'm so excited for other people to read it and I'm excited to see other people's ratings on this book. And I really enjoyed seeing where our main characters end up. Next up, we have You'd Look Better as a Ghost by Joanna Wallace. I was really, really excited to read this book. This was on my fall TBR. I'm sad to say did not live up to my expectations. Maybe I shouldn't have read it this month when I already knew I was kind of feeling meh about books, but I had read nothing like the movies and that was a four star read and I finished it in a day. So like my reading was kind of like re-inspired, but going into this was definitely the wrong choice. This is very dry, dry humor. It honestly put me in a book slump if I'm being so for real. It follows our main character who is a serial killer. It starts off with her killing this man who kind of inconvenienced her and then she ends up with a blackmailer. Someone knows what she did. It's kind of like a cat and mouse game. She's trying to figure out who it is and how to kind of get out of this situation. She's trying to get away with it. So I ended up giving this 2.5 stars. What really annoyed me while reading this book was our main character. She was a serial killer, yet the people she would kill, only reason why she would kill them is because they annoyed her. It didn't really feel like she necessarily had a reason for killing people. I don't understand the way she killed them and got away with so many killings. It was like, she wasn't even good at it. She wasn't even subtle. Like, I don't know how from the get-go she doesn't get caught. And most serial killers are psychopaths, but they are very intelligent. And it did not feel that way with this girl. And it just took a lot of motivation for me to finally get through this book. And it's not even that long of a book. It was less than 300 pages. Next, we have another audiobook that I listened, and that is The Night Guest. I'm gonna really butcher the name, so I'm not even gonna bother. I listened to this on a drive home, and it took me less than two hours to listen to this audiobook. It's a very, very quick mystery thriller. I think it was a mystery thriller. Maybe it was horror. <laughs> It was a very, very interesting and quick story. Our main character, she is like a middle-aged woman and she's having issues with sleeping. So like she'll wake up the next day more exhausted than when she went to bed. She is going to doctors. Doctors are telling her she's perfectly healthy. And one day she notices that she accidentally sleeps with her watch on her wrist and she wakes up the next morning with over 40,000 steps. What was she doing? So the whole time you're just trying to figure out what's going on with this woman. But the chapters, this really annoyed me to no end. It would be a chapter, it'd say chapter 35, and then it would read one sentence, and then it would immediately go chapter 36. And it felt like there was at least 20 chapters where it was a one sentence line. No wonder it took me less than two hours to listen to this book. It had over 90 chapters, but it took me less than two hours to listen to. And I do not speed listen. I put it on like 1.5. I think that really annoyed me. I wish it was a little bit more fleshed out, like more happened. And also the ending, I rated it two stars. The ending did not make any sense whatsoever. It just really, really annoyed me. So it, it brought it down to two stars. That's how badly it annoyed me. And the final book that I read this month was Phantom Heart by Kelly Cray. I have had, once again, I've had this book for over a year now and I finally read it. And I'm so glad that I did because I loved this book. I feel like by the end of this month, this book kind of brought me out of my book slump. It is a retelling of the Phantom of the Opera. So if you're familiar with that, that's basically the premise of this book. It follows our main character who her family just moved into this really large mansion that's kind of a fixer upper. And so they're new to town, her dad, is a huge like flipper of houses. So he is like renovating the house while her and her sister are going to school. But this book starts off with our main character talking to her younger sister, who's five. Our main character is a teenager and her five-year-old sister tells her, there's a man in my closet and he wears a mask. I'm sorry. This is like the start of every horror movie that I am actually terrified 
of. Anything that involves children and them seeing things or things like along the paranormal nature freaks me out. But I will say that hooked me to this story. I wouldn't say this was a scary book. It was not scary. I was sucked in and I loved it. While she's dating this guy from school who's obsessed with paranormal, she is having strange dreams of this guy named Eric. And I'll leave it at that. There's a lot of weird paranormal type occurrences happening at the house and she's dreaming about this guy who's like warning her away. I was sucked into this book. I also read this within a day because it was so incredibly good. It is a longer story actually. It's almost 500 pages long. Surprisingly it's very thin pages and it's a very floppy book which I love. This book truly brought me out of my reading slump. I ended up giving it 4.25 stars. I really 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 enjoyed it. There were some things that were a little bit more confusing towards the end and that didn't really make a ton of sense. That's the only reason why I didn't give it a higher rating but I was sucked into the story. So I highly highly recommend this especially for fall. It gives all the fall atmospheric vibes. Very eerie but not scary. It did not scare me while reading this book. And picture two more books on this stack, audiobooks. <laughs> Honestly, I should just take out this book because I DNF'd it, but we're gonna leave it there just to make the stack look nicer. And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know this was just a very meh reading month. My ratings were not great and I'm very disappointed in the month of September. It didn't feel like a great reading month, but I will say I have never been more excited to read than right now. After reading Phantom Heart, I immediately went into my next book, read it in a day. Then I went to my next book, read that in almost a day, and I'm on to my third book of this month. And I am loving the month of October. It's a fresh month. Really excited to talk about those books at the end of this month and actually have some excitement about the books that I'm talking about and reading. Thank you guys for sticking through this video. Video. I'm sorry if it was lacking emotion on my part. I just was so indifferent this month. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Happy reading. Bye.